As of right now, Kimmy's been out 566 days and 21 hours and 20 minutes. And we have about six more hours and 39 minutes till she's in our arms. So it's been 18 months since McKinley left for her mission, and um, it's surprising how fast it's gone. And yet now here that we are here at the day that we're going to pick her up, it does seem like it's been a long time. And I think we're all ready to go and see her and to hug her and to hear all of her stories. Right before Kinley left, I was making dinner and I was kind of sad because I had never been away from her for so long before and I was feeling like I was losing my daughter. But then Kyle looked up and said, you know, I want you to just know she's going to be away from you physically, but you're going to grow your relationship more than you ever have before. And I can testify that that truly has happened, but I'm ready to have her home with us. Alisa was my first baptism as a missionary. She was just so awesome to find and teach and the easiest person to get along with. Sister Case Kimmy was the first um, Mormon I ever met. She came into the store where I was, where I was working, Mr. Friday, and I almost jumped over the counter to hug her. And I said, oh, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> because I'd never met one. I had read the Book of Mormon, but I never met a Mormon, and I knew I wanted to be one. So um, I was really thrilled to meet her. Everyone in the church loves her so much, and we love her, and she's always going to be my best friend. My first trip to the temple was today, and I wanted it to be with Sister Casey. It means so much to me. I was able to, um, able to bring my dad and my brother's name to the temple today, and my moms and my sisters, and we're going to get them baptized. And uh, hopefully later I'll get my mom and my dad sealed. <laughs> okay, when I first got to Liverpool, I, this area, I was really nervous and really scared to be here. And it was the first Sunday, and me and my companion didn't know anyone. We had never been to this area before. And so we were walking in the doors, trying to meet people, and she, Kelly, your sister Manring, was one of the first people that I met in this area and she really just like helped me feel confident and happy and she took a picture and sent it to my mom and um, she really just brightened everyone's day or me and sister Anderson's day so it was really fun and then we just became really good friends. She had us over every week for dinner and it was so fun. She was a really great friend. I have to say, I had no idea until just now that she ever was even nervous in our ward because she came in and she was confident and she was friendly and outgoing and this is all news to me that you were ever nervous, so she was a great missionary. And I just loved Kinley from the beginning. I could tell that, you know, if, if she was just here as a friend that we would be dear friends and we became friends even with her here as a missionary. and. My children really looked up to her, especially my oldest daughter, Julia. She really loved Sister Case and always would ask me, did you sign up to feed the missionaries again this week? Mom, did you sign up to find, feed the missionaries? So we had them over a lot. On to the next one. Our day is stacked, guys. It's stacked. Kinley, she was amazing. Uh, she's the kind of person that, as a mom, you just hope that your kid meets while they're on their mission. She is like she is awesome. a wonderful, good caregiver and person. I know, I love her. Okay, so this is where I lived in Liverpool. We'd walk, park over there, and we would walk up these stairs right over here. 
5Q, this is my apartment. This is where I used to live. We would walk up the stairs after a long day and I'd unlock the door and go in. And yeah, we're just checking out. This is where we would check our mail, 5Q. So, happy moments or sad moments happened right here. So, in every ward, you always have your best friend member. And she was always our best friend member. She really, really helped us. She was such an example of giving service. This is Sister Arson, by the way. Hi. <laughs> or Natalia, I guess I can call you that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we would go to, or Sister Virgin's uh, coat got stolen and we were asking her what's a good place to go get coats and she's like, I'm going to come pick you up right now and drive you and so you can save miles. So she spent the whole day looking for coats with us and she really helped the missionaries and she was perfect to bring the lessons because she would just say the right things and be awesome. So, and she would feed us all the time and as an example of a good family life. So. I really love her. <laughs> I love you. Sister Case has been so amazing right from when she moved into the ward. She just has this bright, outgoing personality that just draws people to her. And the gospel, you could tell that she loves the gospel and that she understands it. And, you know, the love for the people that she wants to share with everyone. And she works so hard. Every time we'd see him on the street, you know, talking to people, I was like, wow! Like, she always had the spirit with her. You really, every time that she comes into our home, you could just feel so good. And we got to have him over for Christmas, which was so fun. And we got to paint nails and really just see who they are as, you know, being relaxed. And, you know, you could tell that she has great parents that really, you know, she is just a solid, wonderful girl. We're gonna miss her. <laughs> gonna miss you too. <laughs> this is our house in Syracuse, A4 South. This is where we did laundry down there. This is our mailbox. I'm afraid it didn't have that one out there. This is where I live. Yep. Oh no, we're coming late. So, Sister Case literally, pun totally intended, walked into my life one day. One day she was knocking on my door and opened the door. And come to find out, it was a cousin of a cousin, right, mm -hmm. of Kaisi. Kaisi was a little girl who had type 1 diabetes that doctors failed to diagnose and treat fast enough. As a result of that, she suffered a TBI. And through her story, she has touched millions. Now, Kaisi is someone who's very important to me for several reasons. And the fact that her cousin's cousin showed up at my door clearly I mean, you can't get clearer than that. Utah versus my location. And a relative of Kaisi shows up. Well, that's not one of the biggest blessings I have. I couldn't even tell you. Sister Case has educated me so much and learning so much just about, you know, the Bible and the Book of Mormon and all that stuff. So, I will love you for the rest of my life with all my heart, and, uh, well, this is one of the best gifts I've ever had, to call Sister Case my friend. They showed up right as we're in the middle of an extreme construction project. Oh. So, just as we were finishing up, we had to have a bunch of 
children's bookshelves cleaned before they could be removed back or moved back into the room. But in order to do that, we had to hand razor blade gunk, like a black <laughs> oh. glued gunk from the bottom of the so book the book ends. They had to be removed off the shelves before we put them back. Along <laughs> came Sister Case and Sister Campbell, right? Campbell, Red. not Campbell, Sister uh, Red. Red, Sister yeah. Red. And um, we were hesitant at first to give them that job because <laughs> why would we, we do that to anybody? We started doing it. And they said, no, we'll do anything. And it's like, well, maybe we'll start with cleaning windows. And then they're like, okay, give us something else. And then within, what, a couple of days, you had all of the bookshelves in the children's room ready to go, <laughs> put Aww. all of the books back. They helped us with all the books. They alphabetized them. They actually knew. Yeah, we reorganized the whole library. Yeah. <laughs> there are people that don't know their ABCs. These girls knew their ABCs. I can be a librarian. You can, can be proud <laughs> because she knows her alphabet. <laughs> so there were no room for any of these books when I got here. So we would always have to move huge chunks down and just snake them around somehow and fit them. And now it looks so good in here. <laughs> So this is Fort Plain. I served here for three months. Me and Sister Red, I was training her and we came to open this area and I had no idea what to do so we just went and talked to everyone in this town. And we did service everywhere at libraries and food pantries and it was really fun but it was a very small town. So this is Sister Becker, my <laughs> other mission mom. She is yeah. the best. I love her so much. We met at church. And she was just so welcoming and so Aww. kind, and I loved her. We came over here all the time. She made us cookies, and she had us over for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and she was just so nice and loving. <laughs> and she's best friends with Mom, too, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but awesome. yes, I Aww. love her. <laughs> and I love her, too. I could be lost without her. <laughs> At least I knew you were in New York. Now she's gone way out west. I know. I'll will message I ever you see on you Facebook. Again? Yes, I will. We'll I'll see each other on Facebook. Okay. Oh my gosh. You know how I write letters. <laughs> <laughs> you can write, not call. Okay, I'll hey, call you. Can call I know. Now. We can text. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So you you got to give me your phone number. Okay. All okay. right. I don't have one yet. Oh, I love this. Get one. Awesome. <laughs> So this is Carol. She got baptized just recently and I knocked on her door and yeah. she let us in. She Actually, Ev let us in. <laughs> and this is a picture of us in a frame that she has right on her chair. So we were knocking on lots of doors in this area mm -hmm. and then we knocked that right down the main road because we hadn't done this one yet and it was kind of in the evening yeah. and then we, you guys let us right in and you just adopted us as your grandkids and yes right away the two of them came in and I sat them down and we ta had a nice talk and it started from then and they would come twice a week and I couldn't wait for them to come and we were the same person we were really good friends she loves stationery just like me yep. she said when she gets old, she wants to be just like me. Yep, right? this, this I is, do. This is all my... She told me she I'm met a person that was exactly like her. She's yeah. like, Mom, this is my twin. Yeah. How was your shortage. baptism? Tell me about oh, it. Oh, my. I didn't realize I was being dunked. Oh, my <laughs> God. You didn't and realize. I go, and I can't get water in my ears. And I got a bad knees, and that's why I used a cane or... Did it go okay, though? It yeah, they you? had to... Uh, uh, other oats, and I, I was afraid he couldn't do it by himself, so Elder Fafita helped, and he had to go and change into his white. Everybody, the whole congregation was all around, and they, I said, I, I just, I paid $27 and I just had to look nice for tonight. <laughs> Hey, well, it looks nice in this picture. I yeah. can tell. Yeah, it's worth it. Then. Worth the yeah, twenty seven dollars. That was a twenty seven dollar haircut. <laughs>
from shore to shore And when you strip it down to the core People with plenty, they still want more Some things don't work anymore The dollar don't buy what it did before The word of God has been ignored There's not as much peace as there is war yeah, Some things don't work anymore If anything is ever gonna change it's gonna take work, breaking down the walls between us, putting all the armor on, walking in the ways of meekness, being that light in the stone, lifting up the broken hearted, pushing though your back is sore, praying till the fears are parted, rocking on, knocking on a billion doors, cause this work's gonna fix what don't work anymore. Just one soul, but I'm not alone. I know I'm a piece of this rock that's on a roll. Hmm, let the truth be told. If it's ever gonna fill the earth, well, it's gonna take work, keeping on seeking that sickle, sweating from every pore, picking up every signal, bringing in the harvest for the Lord. Daring them to ask the question. Hearts to explore, kneeling till heaven answers, spreading this fire from door to door. Cause this work's gonna fix what don't work anymore. Come on, come on. It takes everyone to get her done. Don't walk. Gonna take work, breaking down the walls between us, putting all the armor on, walking in the ways of meekness, being that light in the storm, lifting up the broken hearted, pushing on your back is sore, praying till the fears are parted, rocking on, knocking on a billion doors, keeping on sinking that sickle, sweating from every pore. to explore kneeling till heaven answers spreading this fire from door to door anymore.